Okay, testing. Testing. Uh, good evening. Can hello everybody. Uh, is this? I just do a sound check. Whether the sound is okay. Muted. No sound. Is okay now. Wait. Hello. Uh, wait. Got sound now? Yes. No. Our sound is okay. All right. Good. Is the sound okay? Sound quite soft. Now sound is okay. Perfectly okay. All right, great. Okay, so uh, I'm using a microphone <laughs> for the first time. Uh, one of our, our 1865 uh, uh, fans actually uh, gave me this, this microphone, which I'm very uh, paise about it. Uh, yes. Uh, does the sound sound good? Okay, or it actually doesn't matter. It sounds the same whether I have, I have the microphone or not. Now. But it's supposed to be a good microphone. So... Uh, it's actually sent by some um, uh, some very uh, high tech people, so I, I suppose the sound is good. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, brilliant chicken genius. Okay, <laughs> the sound is a bit soft. Uh. Can't find the like button. The like is on the <laughs> YouTube itself. I think clip nearer to the throat is better. Okay, uh, wait, huh? Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to use this. There is no volume button to this. Uh, what if I do this? Testing sound, one, two, three. It's buzzing sound. Okay. Is it buzzing sound? Uh, sorry, uh, guys. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it. Okay, my side sound okay. Clip to collar. Sound okay? Alright. Uh, some people say it's quite soft. Some people say it's loud and clear. Uh, I'm not quite sure. There's some buzzing sound. Okay. Uh, sound okay now. Is it still buzzing? Uh, for those people who, come, who just came in, uh, we appreciate you all give a like, okay? Yes, sound is good. Uh, put the mic closer. Over, uh, very, sorry, soft. Um, I can hear it clearly, soft. Uh, a bit buzzing. Oh, no. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull it out, and you tell me whether the sound is better a bit, okay? Uh, when you move our buzzing sound, slightly muffled, clear with airport. Alamala. Okay, have one of these things that uh, is actually uh, more of trouble. I'm going to pull it out, okay? Sorry, guys, I'm going to pull it out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tell me whether the sound is okay right now. Yes. Okay. Tell me whether the sound is okay. Uh, mic test. Sorry, uh, guys. Uh, a bit techno, you know. Uh, Behel in, you know. Okay, so I pulled it out already. So now I'm relying on the phone, uh, microphone. Is it okay right now? Loud and clear better. Ah, yeah. Then, nah. <laughs> Without the mic is better. Okay. All right, good. Okay, so, um, yeah, okay. So, all right, good. Now it's better. Give a like, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how tall? Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, got a windshield for a mic. Now it's better. Okay, good. Okay. All right, good. Uh, I'm huh? clearer, but still soft. Uh, okay, so uh, can you all give a like? Uh, I'll start the talk when uh, I see the like uh, at least uh, catch up to half the, the fans inside. I'm gonna, yes, uh, this first to like, okay, I really appreciate this. This talk is a serious talk because this might be the first time in my life I'd be perceived to be anti government, which I'm not, okay, but it might be the first time. And more importantly, uh, this is a serious talk because it touches, it touches everybody's, touches everybody's um, property. Now the reason why I want to cover this because this is a serious, uh, this is a serious critique of the government's, uh, government's policy, uh, and I found this article uh, written by Professor Ben. And I know the government is reading this. That I know because it was a government officer that uh, sent this article to me. So I know the government is reading this, which means that they are seriously contemplating about some of his, uh, some of his measure. I don't know whether he will do it. So I think I want to cover it. So uh, before we start now, I want to make sure that everybody just click a massive, uh, you know, all the likes. Okay, I'm going to go live on Facebook as well because I want more coverage. Uh, but uh, I would really appreciate everybody on YouTube really would uh, would give a, a serious like, okay? Yes, there's just a lot of people don't give a like. I don't understand why. I need those likes. It's not for personal gratification. Nah. Those likes help to promote the video. And if you haven't given a like, really give a like because this one will affect the <laughs> almost the whole population. So I want to make sure. All right, good, okay? 
I'm gonna go live and live on Facebook. All right, cool. All right, cool. Okay, good. Okay. So um, yes. So good evening uh, on Facebook as well. All right, good. Okay. Now good evening on Facebook. Good evening on YouTube. Good evening on Facebook One. Uh, I haven't go live on Facebook uh, for a long time. Okay. Uh, on my articles, it's an exciting topic, uh, and I. And I think that it is uh, quite important for everybody to, to jump in. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Mr. Lu. Uh, I am not selling handbags tonight. I'm giving a serious uh, talk on property market. Um, and I and for those people who come in for handbags and, and shoes, or whatever, just go straight to a Shopee to buy. If not, uh, just uh, just stay, hang on. And I'm going to, yeah, just the slides are under slides plus one. And I've also provided two links. Now, last, okay, last, uh, sorry, um, B, can you tell Jamina we are, I'm live there? Okay, okay so uh, you might want to do it again, just I, I took a long time. Um, so the second thing I want to tell everybody is that uh, uh, for those people who have got, wait, I'm just going to show you, okay, uh, I'm going to show you some of the interesting stuff here. Give me a minute, I'm going to on it. And yeah, all right, cool. So last Sunday, I did a talk, uh, a serious talk uh, on uh, in Bona Vista, MRT, uh, for us, MRT, Bona Vista Community Center. Um, it was quite a, it was quite a big event. Uh, about three hundred over uh, three hundred people turned up, uh, and I I felt that I was at my very I, I was felt I was at my very best. Okay, who was there uh, in the in the event? You know, it was a big event. Who was there in the event? Say me me me. Okay, no slides received. Uh, B, can you please tell Jermaine? Yep. So, yeah, okay. I think I need to show people how to like on screen. Oh, Chiwi, you are there. Okay, pleased to see you, okay. Uh, yeah, who was there? Uh, okay, Mike, Mike was there, yes. All right, the slides uh, plus one work should work now, okay. Yes, so uh, some people said, uh, Mr. Lu, I missed the event, okay. So uh, I was, my son was very kind uh, and my wife was very kind. They both helped to record some of the videos down. I've downloaded the video onto, I've downloaded a video onto the Google Drive. You can download it if you want. It's gonna be one huge file. You know, it might be, you might want to watch it. Um, but I think, you know, I was, I felt I was, I was really at my one, my best uh, because, okay, Chiling missed it. Um, Su Ching missed it. Some of you missed it, it's okay. I don't know when I'll have another chance again. I'm sure I have another chance. Uh, people invite me now and then. Uh, but I think I was felt I was my, one of my best. Uh, I, I've always given a lot of public talks in the past, but but uniquely this one, I was fired up. Uh, I gave it more as a motivational speech rather than a... It's a, it's a live motivational speech than an educational speech. I hope you feel the fire that I had. I was talking to the heart, not talking to the to the mind. Um, loading on YouTube very the ma fun because I got to stitch all the video together. You know, uh, if someone can stitch it for me and load it up on Google Drive and nicely video edit it for me, I'll be happy. But that process take uncle me too much time, so I decided that you know my life is uh, my life is just too <laughs> my life is just too short. I really don't have the time to do it. Okay, yes. I, I agree. My YouTube audience are much way bigger than community center, uh, but but there is a world of difference when you are when you hear from me in person. I, there is a world of difference. Okay, there's a world of difference. So um, I I was a, I was able to speak to the heart. Okay, I was able to speak to the heart, uh, and I hope that you all felt that as well. Okay, yes. Okay, so um, uh, for those people who just came in on on Facebook, uh, give a blast of light. Those on YouTube. I need you all to give more likes so that YouTube algorithm will promote it, okay? So, heard your fiery talk about fire. <laughs> yes. Uh, read the slides, good point, okay. So, uh, the slides are in slides plus one. Uh, the, the photos and the videos are in CC plus one uh, on Facebook. Uh, and Prof, Prof Ben article uh, is in link plus one, okay, link plus one. So, I've got a lot of uh, things there, you can uh, go check it out, okay? And those on YouTube, uh, they're all in the description. You can download it, okay? With this, I think I'm good to start, okay? All right, so 
Um, let me just open up my slides and I'm good to go. Uh, where is my slide? Okay, and... All right, good. So, oh man. Um, okay, the title of my talk today is called The Singapore Housing Crisis. The Singapore Housing Crisis. And, and really the subtitle, the subtitle is, is a government sledgehammer coming? Is a government sledgehammer coming? Okay. So clearly, um, this is talking about Singapore property market and what the crisis we are in right now. And more importantly is that, you know, is a government sledgehammer coming? The, and the background to this is that one fine day, a government friend of mine sent me an article, um, and this article was written by a NUS professor called Professor Ben uh, Ben Leong, and Professor Ben Leong um, is a is a NUS professor. If I'm not wrong, in School of Computing or something like that, I I do that. But I suppose as a uh, as a professor, you know, you are generally viewed high highly uh, in the you know in the as a as a powerful brain. Uh, but this professor is a bit different. Okay, this professor is diff different. He actually wrote an article in a serious critique of a government. And the name of the article is called On Tone, Deafness, and the Danger of the House Burning Down. Okay, that's quite serious, you know. On Tone, Deafness, and the Danger of the House Burning Down. The word Tone, Deafness is the direct critique of the Singapore government. And he says that uh, he's actually, you know, he's actually accusing the government of being tone deaf. Tone deaf. It's quite a serious accusation. And the house burning down refers to the beautiful house of Singapore and, and really a, a house crashing down. It's a serious accusation. And I've actually put the link of the article in the description on YouTube. And if you were to type link plus one, you will see those, uh, you will see the article uh, in uh, Facebook as well. Okay. So, so uh, this, is a, this is the link of the article. You could go to the slides and find it. Uh, those people on YouTube, the, the plus one doesn't work. That's a Facebook feature, okay? This happens when I've got too many screens. You know, I've got two Facebook screens and one YouTube. I don't. I ran out of cameras. If not, I'll put on. Uh, I'll put on one more for Instagram, uh, and the other one is uh for 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 uh, TikTok. Okay, but anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, so there's no plus one on on YouTube, but there is something that YouTube you need to do. You need you need to hit a like. Okay. Uh, a bit of background uh, about about Professor Leong uh, is that you know if you to look at uh, his profile is damn solid uh, not I rarely I rarely pay a lot of attention to the usual opposition party or anti government voices and things like that not, number one maybe I'm in my heart a bit pro government but more importantly more importantly is that I actually uh, find that. Um, that his voice was a genuine love for Singapore. And he was not out to bring down and criticize the government for the sake of it. He was there to actually provide constructive answers to the Singapore property problem. And therefore, maybe I give a bit of background of uh, Professor Leong first. Okay? I don't know him personally, okay? Uh, but number one, he studied uh, computer science, electrical engineering, at MIT. For those people who don't know, it's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It is uh, really good. Uh. It's only the top Singapore brains goes there, okay? So MIT, I suspect he might have taken government scholarship and maybe even a government scholar. I don't know for sure about that. Uh, but he's, uh, he's clearly a uh, super brain uh, to be able to go to MIT. I don't think uh, Lu Cheng Chuan can go to MIT. Uh. I don't think, uh, not in 100 years. I'll be very proud if my... Children can go into it, but I also don't think, uh, with the exception of maybe Ben and Emily, uh, if they try hard enough and uh, at an interview, they might have a chance going, but I don't think so. Okay, so she's they are MIT and he had a PhD from MIT as well. Okay, yes, uh, Ta Yi, good to see you as well. Okay, yeah, so so uh, it is a it is a he is a uh, intellectual wise is there. Okay, smarter, yeah. Uh, Prof. Ben was director in one of the divisions civil service. Okay, yes. All right, good. Uh, anybody knows uh, Prof. Ben uh, personally? Uh, I would like to know whether he was ex-admin service, okay? Then he, he actually 
was at Public Service Division as the former assistant director at the legal and service discipline. So uh, he was in the PMO office. So he was an ex-government civil servant as well. Then uh, he went to become a professor in NUS. He was a former assistant professor uh, and, and was also in MOE. So um, he has, uh, and, and, and actually uh, then he become a, um, he, he, since 2015 till now, he's in NUS as assistant professor and he's also involved in some artificial intelligence thing and things like that. So brain power wise, he's there. Huh? Brain power wise, he's there. Okay. Um, so, so uh, he's, whether what kind of personality he is, I don't know. But his article is now seriously running well in the social media. And more importantly, is uh, his article now is read by the government. That I can tell you, okay? I can tell you for sure it's read by the government because it was the government uh, friends uh, that sent, <laughs> sent me the article. So uh, it's actually quite interesting. But let's look at the problem itself, okay? Uh, guys, uh, for those in YouTube, I really need you all to give a like. There are less than half of you have given a like, okay? So um, what's the problem? This is the problem. This is the freaking problem, okay? Our HDB prices are ridiculously high. Who agree this is a problem? Say agree, 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 okay? Yeah, agree. This is a serious problem of HDB prices. Now, all property prices across the world has escalated high, okay? But this is a kind, it is, it's a serious problem. It's a, it's a serious problem. We now have HDB being sold at million dollars again and again and again and again and again. And you know, I didn't quite bother about all this because I'm more, uh, you know, stock market and things like that. You know, I also thought that, hey, my house might uh, become a million dollar house. It should be a million dollars house already, by the way. Um, executive Masonette. I know executive apartment in my block, uh, nearby blocks are already close to a million. So mine should exceed a million. So, but you know what? Nobody gains in a property market like this because our younger generation is going to pay the price. Everybody has said it here. Even if you own one or more than one houses today, don't be too happy because your kids are going to suffer. Yeah, it's going to suffer. So our resale price has gone up tremendously. Okay. Now, I didn't know I was quite out of touch. I didn't exactly know how expensive the BTO prices are. But the BTO prices are freaking high. Freaking, freaking high. So, so our BTO prices have become, I use the word, ridiculous. Who agree? Who agree that the BTO prices are getting ridiculous? Say me, me, me. Okay? Me, me, me. Uh, B, BTO prices are ridiculous. Actually, I actually didn't even know the existence of BTO long time ago. Yeah. Okay? The word BTO, built to order, didn't exist didn't exist uh, until uh, recent decades. Last time, my time doing a BTO and uh, yeah, right? It's very, very, very high. The BTO prices are very, very high right now. And I didn't even know that uh, even the mature market BTOs are now close to a million dollars. It's madness, man. <laughs> it's madness. How on earth they become so high? And to make, uh, to add, to add, uh, you know, um, you know, you know, I, I, I seriously think that uh, we are at risk right now of the the the, the country uh, turning into one where our young our younger generation will be disillusioned. Why? Because they might be like Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, okay, the young people become disillusioned because the property prices are so ridiculously high that they can't stay in any reasonable house prices. And in Singapore, it's funny that, you know, we have got to have the minister come in and say that uh, our BTO prices are still affordable. Yeah, maybe, you know, uh, may, may, maybe, but uh, I, would, I would actually think that, uh, that you know, we, we do have that risk, okay? Now, so... Uh, so really, you know, are we at risk that our next generation become this illusion like Hong Kong? Uh, don't say the next illu uh, Don't say the next generation. I know for a fact, of this current generation, a lot of them are grumbling already. Now you know, I sell the one in six five dream, right? A lot of the young people keep saying, "Mr. Lu, what rubbish are you talking about?" Yeah, 
What rubbish are you talking about? I cannot even afford to pay for my BTO, let alone fulfilling a 1 million by 65 dream. I where I got money to transfer into my SA, my special account, right? Let alone, uh, you know, let alone uh, uh, trying to, uh, to just fulfill a, a payout for my BTO or my resale flats and things like that. So quite a serious, quite a serious uh, situation that we have right now. And, uh, and this is quite funny, okay? And someone please tell me what's wrong with, the, what's wrong with this article. This article says, HDB to incur $270 million loss on Central Weave Amokyo BTO, where units are sold for almost 900000 Someone please tell me what's wrong with this article. Okay? All right? Okay, yes. Uh, so, someone please tell me what's wrong with this article. Okay? Um... And, and Professor Leong uh, rightfully put it in a very funny way, okay? Professor Leong put it in a very funny way, okay? This is how the government priced it. I'm not saying it is right or wrong. From an economic point of view, it's right, but I thought that the messaging could be done properly, okay? So, the land... So, HDB make, make losses, and, and everyone's wondering how government make losses, right? Yeah, how the government make losses? Oh, I see, okay? It's this way. The HDB make losses because the land cost is in uh, is is in uh, the land cost is value at half a billion dollars. The half a billion dollars goes to the government coffers, okay, to be kept in our national reserve or something like that. So actually, yeah, they 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 actually measure it. Not uh, the subsidy is respect to market prices, okay. So, um. So when, when we say that HDB make a losses, it's not it's, it's correct, but the government did not make a loss, okay? Now, I don't think that pricing this thing at $900,000 uh, is, is uh, wrong if every house nearby is all value at this one. Uh, but I think that uh, coming out with a message like this is not right. <laughs> you know, what, what, we, what should have been said would have been, you know, uh, while HDB make a loss, you know, okay, the gov, uh, the government, uh, the government contributed their half a billion dollars from this project into the government uh, uh, reserve or something like that. You know, it has to be a balanced picture on the headlines. Of course, maybe it's not a government's fault. It's the, is the, is the news, the news agency's fault. Okay. Uh, but what, what, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with this policy? Okay, this is how it policy and uh, professor, professor. Um, Ben actually said quite well, okay? He says that, no, uh, actually, I want you to sell, uh, I want you to sell you this, uh, this shovel, okay? This shovel, actually, uh, you know, it, it actually cost me $10, okay? But because, now, uh, and a shopping center nearby sell for $20, you, you actually say, hey, bro, I sell you now at 15 It's $5 cheaper, okay? $5 cheaper than the supermarket outside. Uh, therefore, I sell at 15 now. Uh, you know, uh, I actually make a loss of five dollars. You know, you actually know where 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 it's coming at. So when you say something like this, ah, uh, you know, a lot of people tear, right? So that's why a lot of people invoke a lot of anger and things like that. I can understand. Okay, I can understand. Um, there's no right or wrong in this, uh, but I can understand why people get furious, right? So, uh, so I think. The, the 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 messaging is terribly done as usual okay messaging terribly done um so so the land cost is half a billion dollars now at the heart of the problem what is the issue okay what is the issue the issue is this the one of the issue is this thing called asset enhancement uh, policy asset enhancement policy the our our previous, uh, this asset enhancement policy has been a cornerstone of our government policy, whereby we we try to say that, you know, if you get a, f a flat from the Singapore government, uh, from the Singapore government, you know, the value will be enhanced and you're, the, everybody will get richer and richer. Mm. What's wrong with this statement? Initially, when it first came out, I didn't think about it. Uh, in fact, my university honours graduate uh, thesis actually wrote a book, uh, I actually have a book on it, you know. I actually say that asset enhancement policy is very bad for the economy, right? Because, uh, do you think my thesis is uh, somewhere in the cupboard there? I don't know where it's in the cupboard there. Maybe help me find whether it's in the cupboard there, okay? 
Yeah, if it's not there, never mind, okay? I actually wrote a thesis when I was uh, 24 years old, 23, 24 years old. Uh, I actually said that asset enhancement policy is very wrong. You inflate the cost of HDB, then you inflate in turn the price of all the private condominiums and inflate all the value of the land and inflate the whole cost of the economy. Can you imagine all the things it does to the whole economy? And, and then Singaporean, when you, you when your asset inflate, do you really make money? Do you really make money from the asset enhancement? Oh, you found it. Oh, that's amazing, man. All right, cool, okay. Wow, okay. So I, I like to say, I haven't ever written a book before. Huh? Okay, this book is called Economic Impact of the HDB Housing Appreciation. The author is Lu Cheng Chuan, okay. Yeah, this was uh, Department of Economics and Statistics, University of Singapore, 1996 and 1997. Okay, give a round of applause. Uh. I haven't written a book. Uh. I didn't know how Xiao and uh, really, really solid. And, uh, sorry, B also written a book before. Okay, yes. Uh, so, um, and I, and I, and I, and I specific, and then, by the way, you know, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, this, this is a serious, <laughs> This is a serious shit book because, um, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to give you a soft copy to read, but it's not readable. Uh. You know why is it not readable? I, I analyzed that. I basically analyzed that when you have asset enhancement, you inflate the cost of the whole economy, right? And then uh, uh, it, it's not readable, okay? It's not readable. The reason why is that uh, inside, uh, <laughs> inside our formulas like this, uh, okay, your CAD will fail, okay? Yeah, okay, uh, so you you you, uh, you know you have got this mathematical formula and things like that. Okay, uh, can you see this kind of thing? Okay, uh, it is it's not meant to be readable. Uh. Uh, people <laughs> people people take this kind of uh, take take this kind of uh, economic uh, uh, thesis and then just do like that. Wow, see the chin Okay la. what lao eh? It's me say you know. Yeah, you know this kind of thing, mathematical formula. Uh. And then what really is what allows me say you know the kind of thing, right? Okay. Okay la. Kao chim la. Okay, first class honors. So that's how I uh that's how I uh got my first class honors. Basically, come out with a book uh, that nobody's understand, okay? It, it's not readable, la. it's not readable. It's it's really it's really not readable. La. Yeah. This kind of uh this kind of formula uh, is uh is is overall chim. But that's not the point. Okay, apart from me just howling a little bit now, okay? Yeah. The key thing, the, the key thing, when I was a, a young student, I really said that, I really said that the uh, HDB asset inflation is going to be very bad for the economy. Yeah, it's very bad for the economy. Guess what? After 30 years, after I, I, I married, have children, and now my children is now grown up, the problem is still there. The problem is still there. This is a 30-year problem, you know. 30 years ago. This, this, this book that I written was 30 years ago. Is it 30 years, me? 25 years? 30 years? Oh, shit. More than 30 years. Yeah, I'm 50 years old. Yeah, 25, 24 years, 26 years ago. Yeah. So, what's wrong with the asset enhancement policy? Let me tell you what's wrong with the asset enhancement policy, Okay. Let me tell you what's wrong with asset enhancement. Yes, there are 955 you on YouTube. How come there's only 388 uh, likes? Please give a like, you know, this is a, uh, okay. Let me tell you what's wrong with it. Uh. Common sensically, okay, common sensically. Listen carefully, yeah. How can something, how can some an asset value be enhanced or preserved if the value goes to zero in 99 years? Common sense, not. How can something value be enhanced or preserved if in 99 years time, the value goes to zero? Something's wrong? Mathematically, is there something wrong? Who agree me, say me, 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 me. Okay, who agree, say me, me, me. By the way, I'm not invoking anti-government sentiment. Nah. I'm just trying to say that what's wrong with the policy. And fortunately, there is some solution to it, okay? There's something seriously wrong with this, with an asset enhancement strategy when we inflate the value of our, our, our HDBs, okay? It in turn, okay? 
inflates the rest of the economy from private property to land and then to commercial property and everything just inflate, 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 inflate. Singaporeans become richer. Is that true? Yeah, for a while. And then what happens? In 99 years time, the value goes down to zero. Okay, so there is an article that, uh, that was extracted. Okay, so this is a parliamentary sitting in, in 2014 where Mr. Corbun won the previous, uh, the previous uh, minister, uh, I think it was National Development, he says this, and I quote him, okay? Like all leasehold property, HDB flats will revert to HDB, the landowner, upon expiry of their lease. HDB will, in turn, surrender the land to the state. So... So what asset enhancement? Yeah. And and by the way, for those people who still haven't wake up your idea, it's the same for leasehold 99 private property. Go wake up your idea. Yes, for you to think that your leasehold property is not going to escape this rough. Someone say, ah, but no, no, I my leasehold, my leasehold 99 can go on block. Yeah, one out of 50, 100, 1,000 project go on block. Yeah, you think you're the one, okay? So all leasehold 99, whether HDB or non-HDB, goes to one big fat zero. So what asset enhancement? Okay, what asset enhancement? Freehold, yes, there is a real value pre preservation there. That I agree, okay? But, you know, so, so, uh, <laughs> so, Professor Ben, B, I, sorry, I have a cup of water in the, in the, in the basin. Do mind you help me get it? I forgot to bring it here. Sorry? Uh, a cup of, I have a cup of water in the basin. Yeah, so I'm running out. That day I talked too fiery, hurt my throat, okay? So, Professor Ben was quite funny. He said that I don't know whether I have a job on Monday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't know whether I have a job on Monday. By quitting gov but he actually was very critical of government. He, he says that it amazes me that a government consisting of supposedly clever people can be so tone deaf. Okay, right. It amazes me that government consisting of supposedly clever people can be so tone deaf. Why he actually uh, used quite some heavy words there. Uh. I thought it was quite funny. Okay, uh, and and uh, he also said that uh, he thinks that our our minister didn't quite get it. He says that I suspect that the government didn't did really didn't get this, or else. The minister wouldn't have said it. I think the problem with this statement is best explained in the formula. That was the, the $500 million HDB. Yeah, so, um, and, and I, think, I think where Professor Ben actually says this, um, he says that, allow me to say, I quote him, allow me to say that based on what I'm seeing from the current trajectory, I do not believe that Desmond Lee, Minister Desmond Lee, when he stand up in Parliament to emphasize that the government will keep housing affordable, he just simply don't believe that that the government will keep will be able to keep housing affordable. Okay, he just don't believe the minister, uh, and I can finally understand what he means by that uh, because we are we are using um, cooling measures that are chipping and chipping and chipping and chipping where the underlying problem and philosophy has not changed, right? So uh, so he says that this is not to say that I think Minister Lee is lying. On the contrary, he is perfectly well-meaning and he means what he says. So what's the problem, right? So underlying are all these asset enhancement issue and things like that. The whole policies are wrong and things like that. So very serious issue. Now, of course, not all fault is with the government. Don't get me wrong. The whole COVID drove everything up. Before COVID, every all the prices were kind of like okay, right? Were kind of okay, and uh, and then with the COVID, then everything goes. Now post COVID, we are we are suffering from all this thing. This is where the 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 property market is the one that has a lot of imperfection. This is where the government needs to come in with a heavy hand and deal with it, and deal with it. Now everybody say, hey, Mister Lu. Deal with it means your million dollar HDB might go down or so, no? It's all paper value, guys. You know, if I don't have an issue, if everybody's property value, you know, 
actually goes down so that my children can afford housing or at least they have a dream in Singapore. Oh, fortunately for my three kids, they are very international. They've been brought up, they've been brought up to be very, very, uh, very, um, very nomadic, very easy to adapt to, uh, to other country. But what about most of the other kids? You know, most of the other kids. So I think it's a very, very serious issue. So let me walk through what are the five solutions that Professor Ben said. Now, the reason I need to walk through this five with all of you is this. These five solutions are now seen by the government. Okay, the government can number one, choose to ignore all them. Number two, okay, seriously contemplate them, right? So there's only two outcomes. Now, so I got to walk through with you what uh, are the five outcomes. And Professor Ben, some of his uh, some of his solutions are actually quite good. Okay, actually quite good. Number one proposal. Number one proposal: have a cost sell BTO at cost plus without resale. Now, a lot of people won't like this. Okay, number one is basically we sell the flats to our to our to the public. Okay, let them stay. But you cannot resale them out of the market. So in some sense, your resale price is fixed. You can only sell by HDB and this should be sell back to the public again or some some for another. So with this, you actually stop the prices from going up. But some people say, hey, that, that is, looks like rental with a very long lease. Okay, rental very long lease. It is true. It's a very long, very long lease rental. In some sense, your lease also is also the same. Yeah, okay. Do you know how long is the freaking queue right now to get H to get BTO? And finally, when the children actually got the BTO, it's a very very long queue. Okay, it's a very very long queue, and uh, and and we we have to we gotta figure out uh, what what are the ways to do it. Now I'm not saying this is the best, but this is one proposal. Later we vote. What do you think is the best? Okay. Now of course we say none of the above. Then you know, there's no answer to a problem. There's no answer to all the problems, right? Number two, completely exclude the private property owners from HDB, owning a HDB. Okay, this is very, a lot of the private property owners is going to cry murder. I understand. Okay, I understand. But it says this, the only people that can afford private property are the rich. Why are you going to benefit them? Okay, so, uh, you know, private property owners, okay, logically, uh, you know, if you want to press down the press down the market uh, of the HDB, you know, just completely exclude all the HDB uh, dollars. I'm not so sure whether this will push up the private property prices because now you know they they can't own uh, HDB, but so they may maybe jump in the private property. But actually, um, in some sense, there is some merit to this uh, because the private property owners are rich, right? Let them go and stay in the private property. Why go and chill with us in HDB, right? Right, so, uh, so of course, you know, uh, it could be a, it could be a serious, uh, uh, there could be some serious implication. Uh, you no, know, I'm happy to hear some views on a uh, on pro uh, proposal too. Okay. Number three, okay, one of the costs of inflating property uh, prices in Singapore are the foreigners. Okay, are foreigners. I'm not saying they're bad, huh? But they're inflating property, right? make them ineligible to own more than one property. Why do we allow them to buy more than one? Now you got people from China bound out, buy, buy the whole block down, right? Why do you allow that? Right, why do you allow that? Then cause the whole property price to go up. Why do we allow that? Okay, and make them, if you want to own, you die, die, must stay inside. And if you want to move, you must sell, okay? Or cannot rent out or something like that. Make it very stringent that by curbing the demand, now, of course, you say, well, like that, my private property will fall. It's true. You want to make sure your next generation can afford, you must take a hard knock. Yeah, you must take a hard knock, right? Uh, you must take a hard knock, okay? Proposal number three, you know, is actually a, what I call, uh, uh, what Professor Ben called, I think, a golden proposal or something like that. He basically says this, make sure supply exceed demand. You know what's wrong with this? <clears throat> what's wrong with the current uh, current philosophy right now? 
the government is very afraid of excess supply, wastage. Therefore, you build to order. You build to order. As a result, what happened? First of all, there's this lottery that takes years for young people to get a flat. On top of that, okay, on top of that, the, the queue to build the flat is very long. So as a result, all our young people are delaying their delaying their, their marriages and things like that, and delaying their babies and things like that. Right? So so it's very difficult, right? Very difficult. So um so I think it is it is one thing, okay. No, someone said, hey, Mr. Lou, you're also rich. Okay, I'm rich, so but I only have one HDB, I don't have private property, so it's okay, right? If you want to own a private property, then you shouldn't be uh, allowed to own HTB. I'm not saying whether this is right. I'm just stating what Professor Ben say, okay? Uh, I'm saying this because these are already uh, come out already, yeah? So, um, now, if the supply exceeds demand, the government is so afraid that, you know, there's so much supply, yeah? But the government have all the statistics in their fingertips. They know how many people are registering the ROM, they know how many foreigners are coming in. They know they can actually know the demand. And actually, if you worry about you worry about excess supply, it's damn easy to clear supply. Okay, those on Facebook uh, who follows uh, Premium, you know, sometimes when we come back overseas, wow, got wrong supply, wrong, wrong, uh, wrong orders comes in and things like that. You know, we have maybe 10, 20 items that are wrong size, wrong color, wrong whatever. It's so easy to clear them. Just lay long. Cut by $1, cut by $2, cut by $10, cut by $20, cut by $30. At some point in time, you should clear them. Okay? You should clear them. There is no such thing as excess supply. Okay? In the world. Right? Excess supply is when you have a fixed, when you have a fixed price. Yeah. As a result, right now, our children, okay, our children is having an unbelievable queue. Okay? Yes, the whole problem. So I'll quote the uh, Professor Ben. Okay, essentially to achieve this steady state of uh, surplus demand, a uh, surplus supply, we have to significantly ramp up the building of HDB flats and go back to the old build to projection regime. Last time, my time doing a BTO, we always built to projection, not built to order. Now it's collect order first, then build. Right, but you know, you mean as a government, uh, you cannot project uh, the demand. How can that be, right? So smart, right? All the people, even if you put Mr. Lu in, uh, in the uh, in uh, the work as a government, I think uh, as an economist, I can and statistic a statistician, I can easily calculate the demand. Yeah. So I don't think that's an issue. Okay, the issue is really right now that it's a philosophy, it's a it's a it's a policy decision, right? So. Now, if we can execute this policy of supply exceeding demand, we can throw BTO out of the window and our children can marry and have kids earlier. Isn't that exactly what we need and what we want? Yeah. Yep. Very serious, right? Very, very serious. Now, this one is actually quite, quite funny, okay? When I read it initially, I thought it was crazy, but later I think they think has some merit, okay? Proposal number five, okay? Proposal number five is this. Have the political will to coerce the market to behave, okay? So, you know the, gov you know the government says that, you know, wow, prices are so high right now, I want to use this measure to chip it off, chip it off, chip it off a little bit. You know, uh, what we did, we, we a few weeks uh, a few weeks ago, the government came out with this rule and says that, you know, our new Private, uh, those private property sellers, you know, you cannot own a HDB for 15 months. You cannot do this, you cannot do that. So they're chipping, 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 chipping at the ages. So managing the managing the policies on the on the ages to cool things down. Professor Ben said, do you need to do that as a government? All you need to say is, today, let's say, okay, let, let's say, you're the government, uh, you say, this flat today is worth half a million dollars, okay? And me as a government say, I will make sure whatever it takes next year, it will become $400,000. If the government says that, okay? I will do whatever it takes. Sounds like Federal Reserve Chairman Power, uh, but it's happening right now in US. But let's say in gov Singapore government actually says this, 
I will make sure whatever happens, this flat will be $400,000. You know who's going to buy the flat above $400,000 today? Right? Who is going to buy the flat above $400,000 today? Anybody? So if the government outright say, uh, I will make sure, uh, you know, Lim Pei will make sure the price that uh, will be a $400,000 today, no one's going to buy above $400,000. Automatically, the price come down. What sets the price is not demand and supply, it's expectation. If I know that government is going to whack something, I'm going to hold back, right? I'm going to buy no more than $400,000 because let's say something goes up, bam, you know, government will whack something and bring it down. Bam, government will bring it down. So in, the, in his quotation, he said, at the end of the day, it boils down to managing expectation. The details doesn't bother that much. As long as the government is willing to inflict pain, prices will drop. Inflict more pain, the prices will drop more, right? So, so it is a, it is a, um, it is a serious act, right? So, no, that, so there are, there are altogether five proposals as given by Professor Ben, which I thought was, a, uh, wow, it's like, uh, you know, see, so, okay, so let's think about, let's, please remember, I want you to tell me which proposal, which proposal do you think, okay, do you think is the best for Singapore? I say again, I don't have any anti-government sentiment. I don't have. In fact, I'm very supportive of them. But, you know, sometimes when we see that things are not working well, we are worried for our children, we should speak up. We should not be afraid of doing that. Speaking up doesn't mean that we are anti-government. Speaking up means we are offering solution, you know. We offer a view to the government and offer solutions to the government, okay. So, maybe, let's let's go, okay. So, uh, pro proposal number one is a cost plus with no resale. Proposal number two is exclude all private property owners from owning HDB. Proposal number three is, okay, make the foreigner ineligible to buy uh, more than one property and make them die-die stay in it. And proposal number four is ensure that supply exceed demand. Proposal number five is have the political will to say whatever it takes, I will bring the price price down. Okay, let's see one, two, three, four, five, and you can say all the above. Okay, so I see a lot of two, three, and four. What's four? Huh? Um, four is uh, ensure supply exceed demand. Okay, three and five. Uh, three is uh, foreigner ineligible. Okay, five is uh, have the political will. I think three came out to be a big one. Yeah. Three came a big one. Everybody agrees that the foreigners shouldn't uh, allow to be owned more than property. Why we should we allow that? I totally agree. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Chun Yao said, Oh, hi, Chun Yao. Good to see you. None. No, I think it's important that when we say none, you know, you got to give an answer, right? got to help, you know, give an answer. What else can we do, right? Yeah, all this, you yeah, agree with you, Chun Yao, all these were massive repercussion. All of them, okay, all of them. None of them are, none of them are bitter. But you know what? What's the worst? If if we don't do anything, our children, okay, our children will not have a, uh, will, will not have a house to stay, or right? we'll, not, we'll be suffering and paying to our, <clears throat> uh, paying to our nose. So, so uh, basically he, okay, so five, okay, I see a lot of, three and I see a lot of three and five okay oh my brother is watching as well okay speculation drive out prices yes okay uh, three one three four five one okay one uh, by the way when you put a number down maybe okay the government is watching as well okay yeah so um, do you know today about the buyers are locals, no foreigners? I don't know the number. I think the, the, the government will know. Okay, all except two. Okay, what is two? Uh, two is uh, exclude private property owner from owning HDB. Okay, so, um, okay. Number three and five makes sense. Okay, sustainability is three and five. Okay, looks like three, of course, whack the, <laughs> whack the foreigners first. And I think, personally, I think three, good idea, okay? Four, 
ensure supply exceed demand is a must do. It's a must do. So three, four. Five, I don't need, I don't know whether government needs to do that, okay, but uh, I'm more towards a three and four, okay, three and four a kind of person. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a serious uh, thing, okay, it's a serious thing. So we have got, oh wow, this is the biggest turnout I have. We have got 1,600 people watching. Mama, B, B. <laughs> so I, th I think it's very important for us to put, uh, yeah, put, to, put this in perspective, right? So, uh, I don't think we want to exclude all the PRs from coming, the foreigners from coming. They do contribute to a society. But it is a, it is a serious matter. It is a very serious matter. Time for Mr. Lu to sing a song. <laughs> okay, you, when you give me 1,000 likes, I'll do it, okay? Yes. So, um, so yeah, so I, I think, I think let, me, let, me, let me read his closing statement, okay? Uh, let me read his closing statement. However, I'm convinced, and this is where I think it's, it's good. I'm convinced that if we can collectively tame the housing problem, our children will be less stressed. They will be no longer forced to take on this huge financial burden when they get married. Do you agree that our children right now, our children right now are... <laughs> sing a song to calm the tension. It's so funny, okay? So, uh, you, do you agree that our children right now will have a huge loan to pay when they get married and have a house? Do you first agree with that? Okay? Uh, for me, you know, if I really want, you know, you know uh, help my children uh, to pay for it. But, you know, why do we need be in such a, why do we need to be in such a, a, a situation, right? So, the vast majority of us, and this is what uh, Professor Ben said, except the ultra rich, will be also less stress for our children. <clears throat> While I believe that there will be long-term economic benefits for the country, just for peace of mind and for our children, I hope that this is a trade-off that we can collectively agree to accept. Okay? So, this is one of those things that, you know, that, that it is going to be painful. Okay? Painful. So, we we re let's let's not get let's not get this idea that let's not get this idea that uh, we are we are okay we are okay our country is okay the houses are affordable okay just let me take a record of this okay let's not believe that our prices are affordable it's not lah it's not let's let's accept let's call a spade a spade it's not affordable. And uh, our children should not be burdened with this kind of this kind of heavy, heavy loans. Okay, our time we don't have this kind of heavy loan. Uh, okay, I don't I don't have this kind of loan. Today the the one eight six five dream is a uh, <laughs> foregone conclusion. If the house prices are at this kind of extra astronomical number, yeah, and stop comparing with the rest of the country. You know where rest of countries uh, around the world and say that our affordability is uh, affordability is uh, is so much uh, better than rest of country. It is true that countries in shit, but do you need to join them? Yeah, okay. So I I I, I think this is uh, this is you know yeah. Uh, so Lance, uh, uh, Professor Ben, you can take a look at my slides. All the details are there. Yes, okay. So so I think I think that. I think that this is a serious problem. I thought this article is very good. Uh, and I want to know uh, what some of you are, okay? Well, let's take some questions and let's have some discussion on this, shall we? Yeah, okay. It's, uh, we're going to be very rich discussion. We have got, yeah, 1,600 people. This is the biggest turnout. This is a hot topic, okay? All right. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to join politics. I don't be mad, okay? Yes, I'm... Uh, I'm a blood sucking businessman. I intend to stay that way. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I say again, this is this is not in criticism of the government, but I think that when there are problems out there, I think we should uh we should come up with ideas how to resolve it. You know. Now it's very easy to say that, you know, it's very easy to say that uh you know, this is a problem for the government. I, if the government comes off, I'm going to vote for the opposition party. I don't want to see that happen. I don't believe in the opposition party. A lot of them are crap, you know. But I want our government to be able to solve this problem. So I think some ideas like this are actually very good. Not all of them, or at least a combination of these answers are very good, okay. 
So uh, let's get some views from everybody, eh, shall we? Okay. I don't agree with all. I only feel that the young generation should work even harder and lower the expectation. This is a HDB BTO. They're not even private property. Yeah. No, how, how tough is it, right? The parents are so stressed that we're saving money in case we have to help our kids to pay down their down payment. The stress is a cost generation. I totally agree with you. The kids has no way, no way by themselves able to pay for their house. No chance. Yeah. Very no chance. Very little. Very few of them, if their parents don't come and help, it's very difficult. I had help when I bought my first HDB from my parents. Okay. Yeah. HDB should make it a fair price for all to afford more. The private property is a market by itself, you know, it can go up, go down, you know, that's it. But HDB must be kept affordable for our children. That's something very philosophical, okay, very philosophical that we must uh, achieve for our children. Okay. Yep. Any uh, comments on this? Yep. Um, yeah, if you can Amokyo BTO, is it considered lucky? 900,000, you know? Yeah. Are, are you sure that, uh, you know, people, young young kids with, uh, you know, Takong Zaya can pay for a HDB at 9,000? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Even my HDB, uh, this one is, uh, it's not, uh, at one point in time, it's not. When I was so far king, let me see what she say, he says. Okay. When I was younger, I dare switch from a banking job to start a business after 10 years because I know basic affording if I fail. Not sure where I do it if my current environment. How to encourage entrepreneurship when you worry about basic need? Exactly. Actually, Professor Ben was quite harsh with some of the words. Uh. He considered those um, pr private property owners who rent out their house and things like that. They, they, they call them parasites. Well, it was quite heavy. It's too much. Uh. Uh, but I think where it's coming from is that where it's coming from is that um, that you know there's more economic value when when people are feel more free to go and venture into something, right? So I, I can understand I, I, why I stay HDB is because I want to free up capital so that I can use the capital to deploy to create businesses, right? So I already, create, already created two businesses. I'm in a process creating two more. Why I'm able to do that? Not because Mr. Lu is smart. Because Lu don't have heavy commitment in property. Mom, let's say... I got huge loans in property. Why would I have the guts to go out and venture? Right? Okay. All right. Karen Lim says this HDB is the basic housing that should be kept affordable for generations. I agree. I, I completely, the big thing I totally disagree, and please all give a blast of light. Uh, stop calling it an asset enhancement policy. My God. How can it be asset enhancement and preserving? value if in 99 years it goes to zero what semi asset enhancement it cannot be asset enhancement right it's not an asset it's not an asset enhancing when the value will go down to zero and i want everybody especially those people who are thinking of buying those expensive flats to know this your hdb will go to zero <laughs> one big fat zero your 99 years 99 years flat will go to zero as well. Yes. So therefore, therefore, you know, we, we need to be careful on this asset enhancement policy. I told you guys, right? 27 years or 26 years ago, I wrote a book, freaking book, uh, for my thesis that says the economic impact of HDB housing appreciation. 26 years ago, I really said that if we allow asset enhancement, what will happen? The cost of the whole economy will go up. It will erode our competitiveness, right? And then, of course, my book, not quite readable, okay, but yeah, but it's uh, first class honest, okay? No how sell, uh, real, 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 real book I've written, uh, got Liao one, uh, <laughs> okay? And uh, it's collecting dust in my cupboard right now. <laughs> so funny, okay? Okay? All right, um, any, any comments? Okay, uh, interest rates are high. You know what I'm afraid? I'm afraid of this, okay? I'm afraid the house prices will come crashing down. There's no reason why it won't come crashing down. I actually think the house prices will come crashing down because I already see that in Europe already. 
I already see in US is coming down fast and furious. I just wondering when that when that will happen in Singapore. A lot of people will be caught with their pants down because they believe in the asset enhancement dream. They believe that property is pao jia, won't, won't lose money one. That is very scary. 1997, 1997 really was a, was a was a very serious case and 2008 as well where property prices did come down fear fast and furious okay all right okay hi mike okay good to see you okay with this uh well this is a very fiery top uh very fiery topic i can see everybody coming in now i hope that you know uh everybody will will find this uh We'll find this uh, uh, discussion interesting. Uh, this is not a finance. Uh, uh, it's not a finance. Uh, you know, stock market topic, but I think it's an important topic for all of us to know. Okay, um, and we should uh, we should know that. I say again, okay. I know for a fact the government is reading this article. Okay, reading this article, I will be a bit more conservative and cautious. Uh, about being too bullish about property market, okay? Yes, right. Okay, so so I, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm just uh you know I know for a fact these are happening, okay. Um, but the bad government may not do anything, so you know that's that's the government's right to do it. Cool. Uh, any questions? Uh, any questions or anything? Uh, happy to to take some questions. Um. Singapore has moved from move to be an Asia financial hub. What happens to income? Okay, yeah, Asia financial hub is true. I think I just read from South China Morning Post that Hong Kong has start to overtake China, Singapore in a few areas already. Uh, so the competition is uh, quite stiff. Yes, okay, income generating asset. Okay, cool. Um, any other comments? Okay. If not, uh, if not, okay. Um, yes, for those who are on uh, YouTube, please uh, remember give a like. Okay, I'm just gonna keep the record down so that I know. All right, good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me tonight. Okay, I got time. Uh, in a few days' time, it will be my birthday, uh, and. A few days now, my birthday, and uh, I will, you know, celebrate my birthday. For those people who send me birthday present during the event at uh, Bona Vista CC, thank you. I really appreciate this. Please don't do that, okay? I really appreciate this. You know, just uh, drop me. The best thing you could do is just drop me an email, or which is uh, my email is all in all my slides there, okay? Uh, an email or a comment, and I just encouraging me that will go a long way, okay? My children always have a problem buying Chris, uh, birthday and Christmas present for me because they know their father wants something to touch the heart rather than, uh, yeah. So, but I've got people who gave me some really expensive gift where I feel very terrible. Yeah, by, by my standard, very expensive. So I, I feel terrible, but I really appreciate all those birthday wish, uh, uh, the birthday gifts and birthday wish that were given to me. I really appreciate that, okay? Yeah, so uh, maybe in a few days time, I'll give you my reflection on my 50th birthday. Uh, yeah, 50th birthday uh, reflection, okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Michelle, uh, Clem, uh, Clement, uh, thank you. Uh, Jessica, thank you to you too. Yeah, Chunyao, thank you. Lynn, thank you, and Nancy, thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, and have a, have a good night, okay? I really appreciate this. I got a feeling I cannot see the YouTube comments that are coming in, but I really appreciate all these comments as well. On Facebook as well, thank you very much. Birthday song by Kit, okay? On that day, maybe I'll, I'll share. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, okay? But yeah, there's a... Wow, there's a huge turnout of uh, maybe 1,700 people, okay? Okay, I really uh, appreciate this, okay? Good night and bye-bye, okay? Good night, okay? In a few days' time, I will go to Europe. Uh, just... Uh, in one or two days, I'm going to go to Europe already. So, uh, so I, I, was, I will do my usual work with V again. Okay, Chiling, good night to you. Yes. Okay, Michelle, good night. Okay, everybody, good night. Okay, good night. Those on uh, YouTube, okay. Uh, somehow I can't see the comments. Maybe I'll check whether I can see the comments uh, on YouTube, okay. Um, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Okay, uh, I hope I can see. Uh, oh, yes, so many comments. My goodness, I'm 
the stupid thing is not showing up here. I really appreciate, okay? Uh, I really appreciate all those uh, birthday wishes, okay? I really appreciate, okay? Yes, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Good night, everybody. Okay, good night, everybody. I really, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I'm 50 years uh, of age. Uh, I, instead of saying 50 years old, I'm 50 years young. Because I hope to be younger, okay? Uh, I hope by... Uh, in time to come, my hair will grow and things like that, yes. Okay. How many phones do I have? I have a lot of phones, man. <laughs> uh, here, I already got four phones, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Su Ching and Chris and uh, the family and Kara. Everybody, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Really appreciate Linda. Okay. Annie, Caroline, you know, really appreciate all this, okay. And my hair is growing. Uh. Yeah, it is getting a bit itchy and uncomfortable. Uh. Beta Han. Yeah. Okay, good night. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night. Okay, good night. Good night, good night.